hello. I am driving down Highway 85. I am in North Dakota right now, but I'm quickly going to move into North into South Dakota. Now, odd background. Didn't I just make a big deal about my set? Well, I am in Spearfish Lodge in Spearfish, South Dakota. It's actually kind of in the middle of Spearfish Canyon, if you're interested. In fact, I just mispronounced the name of the place. It's Spearfish Canyon Lodge. So, I'm in Spearfish Canyon Lodge. This is a motel room, and no, I do not have a bed that looks like this. So, I'm headed down Highway 85, um, still in North Dakota, like I said, and uh, we're going to head through the cave hills here. I did this at about eight times speed, but uh, I'm gonna, this is the beginning of a series of videos. i uh, breaking this trip up. First set of videos is going to take us right to the beginning of Spearfish Canyon. The next video will probably be a tour of Spearfish Canyon. And then the then after that, I will be going through Lead and Deadwood and down to Hill City and past Mount Rushmore and maybe through Keystone. I haven't quite picked out my route for that yet. Whoops, I just unplugged the computer and I have a dying battery. By the way, slowed down here because to the left is Haley Dam, which is an interesting lake, which one of these days I'll have to take you to. Uh, also, the town of Haley, which is small, but, well, interesting again. Okay, so anyway, I'm going to go through uh, the Black Hills. That'll be the third video. Maybe third and fourth. It depends on how long it is, because I haven't filmed it yet. And then, I will be heading into Rapid City. Uh, that'll be interesting, because I have not been to Rapid City in a while, and I hate, 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 hate city driving. In fact, you're going to see me tense up in this video, except you don't see me and you don't realize how much I'm tensing up. But if you were my passenger, um, oh, South Dakota border here. But if you were my passenger in some of these cities, you'd see how tense and nervous I get, because I don't like driving in the city. I live in a county with no stoplights. In fact, there are no stoplights in any of the counties touching my county. I, don't, I go months without seeing a stoplight, if that makes it you gives you some perspective. I go months without seeing a lane, a road that's more than two lanes. So, yeah. But anyway, I'm heading down to South Dakota here. Uh, now I'm in South Dakota. I'm going to hit the town of Ludlow here pretty quick. But, I uh, see this series of videos. So Rapid City will definitely be one of them. That should be interesting, unless that's a bad experience for me. Then I may just omit that. And then I'm going to head up to, uh, out of Rapid City, we'll go interstate for a while, then I usually branch off through Sturgis. I go through the town of Newell, which is a meat town. Uh, then I go up through, uh, you know, I could go home the same way you see here, but instead, I'm going to keep going north and go through Reeder, North Dakota, which is not that special, but it's, it's a nice town. So this is the town of Ludlow over here on your left. That is a church from the Sky Ranch, which has moved here. I think it's a rural congregation that has now moved into Ludlow specifically. Uh, also on your left here now, we're approaching the Ludlow School, which is a elementary school, basically. On the right is the rural fire department and a bar slash restaurant, which I've never eaten at. Yeah, there's the school on the left. Um, but uh, anyway, not much to the town of Ludlow. But it's part of the Harding County School District. We're headed towards the heart of Harding County which is Buffalo, South Dakota. I once took a picture of the Cox Church, which is near Buffalo, South Dakota, um, posted online and found out that a tourist website for Buffalo, New York, had appropriated my picture and was using it on their website. They even had a map location for it. And it's, you know, it's a country church way, you know, kind of north and west of Buffalo, South Dakota. They had a map location on it in Buffalo, New York, which... I wish I'd written down because I'd kind of like to see it someday, the location. But they appropriated it for their tourist website as one of the churches in Buffalo, New York. Well, sorry, you're a thousand or two thousand, somewhere in there, miles off, people. So I had to email them. And I was nice about it because they used my picture without permission. I could have really gone after them for you know, using my photograph for advertising. Because, you know, you do have copyright of any work you produce. and yeah. But I'm a nice guy, and you know, it was an honest mistake. And usually I like some publicity. In fact, there are one or two restaurants in South Dakota that 
have some of my pictures as kind of like wall art and stuff. They use, you know, I didn't get paid for it. I just have my name on it. But, you know, it's big wall. The one is apparently, I've never seen it, but it's big wall art that's of a famous landmark. In fact, that's one of the things I may check out on this tour is see how that was used. But anyway, yes, I do some photography on the side. But uh, my big thing is sports photography because I'm just not good at landscape photography. We're uh, driving down Highway 85 toward Buffalo, New York. And you may have seen the heading that, or geez, did I just say Buffalo, New York? Buffalo, South Dakota. But you may have seen the title of this video. I wanted to address YouTube comments really briefly. Well, first of all, I love constructive co comments. Whether it's things like, this is what I like about your video. Please keep doing it. Or whether it's things like, wow, this is something I really don't like and I wish you could change it. And here's what you could do. I'll come back to that thought. This is Buffalo, South Dakota. Another reason I'm slowing down the video. Buffalo, South Dakota is a town of about 200 to 300 people. I uh, mentioned in one of my other driving videos that I like small towns, but I wanted to live in a small town that's big enough to have the basics. Like a grocery store, uh, hardware stores, and other basic for me. Buffalo has those. doesn't have much. I mean, the grocery store is small. But Buffalo does have the really, really basic basics. So I like Buffalo. Buffalo also happens to have a really nice school. Um, they used to have a really awful school. I've toured it before it was torn down. It was right on this road, actually. But the new school's a lot better. Now, I was hoping that it would show up on the side there. But uh, even though I had turned my camera toward it, it really didn't show up. So it is what it is. I'll have to come back some other time and maybe fill you in on that. It's kind of on a tight timeline here. Because I had to get to Spearfish Canyon Lodge while there's still daylight. By the way, the flashing there, kind of a neat effect of cameras. You'll see it when I photograph sports, because I do a lot of sports photography. If the scoreboard is in my picture... A lot of times it looks like somebody turned it off. Well, no, it's just because the scoreboard actually constantly flashes. And the human eye doesn't see it, but the camera does with its 1-800th speed. That's what the old school was. It's built during the Depression. And, you know, some school districts will build a new school, and you're like, well, you're just using taxpayer money up. Buffalo, South Dakota is one of those places that absolutely needed a new school. I couldn't argue with that one bit. And the new school they have is nice. It's well thought out. Uh, if, if they grow a bunch, of course, they'll be in trouble. But I don't think that's too likely. So I think they're going to be well served for that by that building till I'm done working anyway. Uh, but I don't work there. This is Main Street. Over there, that odd green building on your right is the grocery store. There's a post office on the left. A whole bunch of abandoned buildings here, and then at the end of the street, the next green building is a lumber yard slash hardware store. Uh, there's a flower shop there. There's a bar. Actually, there's two bars. Not a lot of places to eat in Buffalo that aren't bars, but that's another story for another time. That's kind of a thing with small towns, is especially in the Dakotas, is they, the bar is the last thing to die. If I were to go right, oh, Jaguar, wow, I didn't notice that when I drive past it. You never see Jaguars out here, wow. Anyway, if I were to turn right here, I'd go to Camp Crook, South Dakota, which is an interesting town, which we're going to visit some other time. I'm definitely going to visit because it's very interesting. And uh, But we're headed back out to the highway here toward the bar. Yes, one of the two bars. I can't remember if this is the one that the city of Buffalo owns, but yeah. The city owns a bar. Go figure. Uh, yeah, that's the Dakotas for you. But uh, anyway, back on 85. So where was I? Oh, yeah. The other topic I wanted to hit was YouTube comments. Um, so we'll do that in just a second. I just want to mention, in case I haven't, because I didn't write a script for this. I'm sitting in my motel room and just on the spur of the moment filming the audio here. If I haven't mentioned it already, we're go we the Buffalo is in the cave hills of South Dakota. We're going to eventually pass the Crow Buttes, which I'll pause my story when we get there. Um, when you get past Crow Buttes, 
you're going to see start to see the Black Hills of South Dakota, which is amazing. But with a dash cam, it takes the landscape and goes quick because it wants to have a very wide view. Well, to get that wide view, you need to go and squish everything. If you, if you understand optics, you know what I mean. So uh, you can't really see the landscape in the proportion that I see it. Now, if I put a 85 millimeter lens on a full frame camera, then yeah, it would look right, but you wouldn't see a whole lot of the landscape. So it's a trade off because with my eyeballs, I'm going this way and this way, looking all over the place. So I'm doing what I can uh, with a driving video. Okay, so back on topic. Uh, so the other topic I wanted to hit, besides what, what's upcoming with my videos, is the YouTube comments. Now, I have an awesome audience. I've gotten very few negative comments. Uh, those few that I have gotten, you know, I've been able to deal with. Uh, there's one person I've had to block. Uh, he was... When he started threatening me, I, I kind of said, okay, that's enough of you, buddy. And blocked him and have heard no more since. Uh, but basically, I've been very lucky. Now, what, what's inspiring me to post this is uh, there was a blog entry recently by Stephen Brown um, talking about the dark side of the fountain pen world. And it, it's on his blog. You can look at his blog. I'll try and put the entry below if I remember. But um, it's not really a fountain pen thing. And I think he does mention that in his blog entry, but you know, it's not really the fountain pen world. It's it's the nature of the internet and more specifically YouTube. Uh, YouTube and the internet invite anonymous comments. Now, in a lot of cases, that's good. Like, if I wanted to post something about my views of education on North Dakota that are more than just mildly controversial, because I've I've said a few things that you know I'll I'll say in public to anybody. But if I really want to talk about something, but I'm scared for my job, it's nice to have that cloak of anonymity. I know they say we well, should own every comment. This is Reddick, South Dakota. Didn't even bother slowing down because I don't think there's anybody that lives there. But we're coming up with the Crow Buttes. Next time I come this way, remind me to do a video about, or at least part of the video, where we tour the Crow Buttes. Uh, there's a whole big story about an Indian American Indian massacre and battle and such that happened here. Uh, we'll, we'll just leave it as it's an interesting story and there is a general store here out in the middle of nowhere along Highway 85 because yeah I'm really accelerating this but remember this video should be two hours and 30 minutes long. Well I, 25 minutes but whatever. I sped it up for you. That should give you an idea how much empty space there is out here. So if you are running low on gas and you're going down highway 85 or north on 85 you are so happy to see this store because that's it if you run out of gas you might not even have cell service and if you're me you don't own a cell phone yet although i plan to get one this summer and replace my landline because for my job i've just discovered i kind of need it anyway headed south here and back to the youtube comments by the way uh if you were not on the squished dash cam, you would get your first glimpse of the Black Hills there in the distance. All right, so uh, anyway, Stephen Brown was complaining about these comments, and it's very disheartening. You know, most of us, unless we're these fragile, delicate flowers, welcome constructive criticism. Like, you use the word um a lot. Or, you know, could, could you do more close-ups of the pen? Or could you have your face actually fill the screen instead of just be a tiny one-third of the screen or do you know anything about the rule of thirds or you know whatever I, I could go on but those are helpful whether you take the suggestion or not is another story but what, what at least what you're getting there is something where you can say hey that is somebody who's trying to help me make my videos better and of course, we all love the comments like, I love what you're doing. Oh, keep doing those driving videos. You know, those are great. The more specific ones like, I like the fact that your videos stay about five minutes, except apparently for my driving videos because I see them at 15 minutes. Um, those are good too. We don't like the negatives as much, but if it's constructive, most of us can handle it.
It's the ones that aren't constructive that aren't helpful. Now, like I said, I blocked somebody years ago who was threatening me. Um, I once had somebody, not on YouTube, but on a different um, platform, let's say, who got really creepy about me and made me really leery about getting back on YouTube again, actually, but got over it. Um, there, that blue is the Black Hills. Anyway, we have those, but uh, those are unusual. What you're more likely to get are the what they call trolls. Now, what a troll is, that's somebody who's looking for a reaction. Now, you know, I'll say things sometimes just to get a reaction, uh, just because the discussion is boring, so, you know, I'll play devil's advocate or whatever. You know, that's kind of fun. Trolls go a level beyond that. They want an emotional reaction. They want to hurt feelings. They want to get anger. They want to incite a fight. Uh, these are people who say stuff like, I don't want to see your fat, sweaty face, or wow, you're bald, or oh, you look so old, or why are your eyebrows uneven heights, which, by the way, they're uneven. And there is a story behind that, too, which will be for another day. But it's really exaggerated today, and you know if you, there's a reason I, I turn that light on and not that light, because I don't want you to see how awful this eye looks. Um, and it's a problem from long ago. It's not a recent problem, but it's flaring up today, and it looks terrible, and I had to face my students with it, so that was fun. But none of them said anything, so that shows me the difference between real life and YouTube. Because in real life, we see, oh, that's a person. On YouTube, people... I don't think people always realize that they're dealing with real people. Now, when you make a nasty comment on YouTube, there's a real person you're commenting to. Um, and, you know, we forget, too, you know, if somebody makes a nasty comment to me, it's easy to forget that, oh, yeah, there is somebody so whose emotional life is so pathetic that they actually think it's worthwhile to post a comment that's that hurtful, that it actually makes them feel better. How sad that there are people like that. So, that's an ugly reality. As long as we remain anonymous, and until our culture starts to assimilate the whole idea that, oh yeah, online is real life, that's something we're going to have to deal with with our online communities. At the same time, people say, well, grow a thicker skin. Well, you know, as a teacher, I've had to grow a thick skin. Uh, honestly, parents are worse than kids. And... Honestly, I see the best side of kids because I think they show their worst side at home sometimes because I've seen really nice kids be awful to their parents. But, uh, I, you know, I've had parents say just some horrible things that I couldn't even dream of a kid saying to me. You know, I remember one shocking one. There was a dad who basically, well, I'm not going to use the words he used, but he quest first he questioned my sexual orientation and then he basically called me a piece of human excrement. Only, in those words, much more direct, specific words. Well, I don't think he actually was questioning my sexual orientation. And I don't think he was actually confused about whether I was human or a piece of human excrement. He was insulting me because he didn't like how his kid was doing in my class. So rather than deal with what's wrong here, you know, is it your teaching? Is it my, something my kid is or isn't doing? Is it the subject? You know, what's going on here? He just went to really base insults. And uh, I kind of picture him whenever I run into these troll comments on YouTube from different people. And like I said, I don't get them too much on my channel, but I only have like a what do I have? 300 and some subscribers versus thousands for people like Stephen Brown or Matt Armstrong. Um, so they see a lot more of that. By the way, that was the town of Belfouche. I totally forgot because I got into my video. Belfouche is a town of about five or 6,000 in South Dakota. Very big town compared to mine. Um, I wouldn't call it a city. I'd call it a super large small town, but I already told you how big my town is. And red lights are something that takes me some getting used to. All right, so anyway, headed into the Black Hills, headed towards Spearfish here. Uh, back to the YouTube. And I've got three minutes left to finish this thought. So uh, 
They say grow thick skin, and I have had to. Not so much with kids, because with kids, I can when if they do say something ridiculous. First of all, nothing. I haven't had very many that have topped that particular father. Um, but second of all, with kids, I can just chalk it up to immaturity. They'll outgrow it. The adults, that's a lot harder, because they are supposedly mature intelligent people who've had some life experience. I have a much harder time with adult insults. You know, there's a couple teachers in my school that honestly don't like me. There's one that, you know, I don't know why people tell me this, but talk about me behind my back. You know, she's said some pretty horrible things about me. And other people feel like they need to tell me. It's like, why? I don't need to know this. But, you know, she does. But, uh, so thick skin, but it's hard as you're constantly subjected to that negativity, it's just like, why? Well, that's what Stephen Brown's point was. Yeah. Grow thick skin if you're going to put yourself out there. Yeah, the people commenting probably aren't as good as you because they're not, they're, they don't have the balls, pardon my crudeness, to put themselves out there in public and produce something in order to have it insulted. They're a bunch of eunuchs who just want to insult stuff because it's easier to tear stuff down than to create anything. But it doesn't mean it doesn't affect you once in a while. That's all Stephen Brown was saying. Um, in nicer words than I just used. I, uh, yeah, this is the town of Spearfish. I may or may not include it in the Spearfish Canyon video a little bit slower. So uh, we're just going to rush here. So I've got a minute left for this video, so I'll just close with this. Yes, grow a thick skin, but also, why aren't we calling out these trolls? Yes, we're inviting them onto ourselves, but here's the thing. Some of us have actually thought about, do we block all comments? It occurred to me when I had that guy threaten me. You know, it turns out he's in England, so yeah, you're going to buy an airplane ticket to come to North Dakota. Oh, and by the way, far, far from any airport, so you have to drive forever just to come do what he said he was going to do to me. Well, no, I don't think so. So, yeah, Spearfish Canyon here. I'm going to close with that. Um, just thick skin. And try being civil and realize there are people at both ends of it. There are people at the commenting end, and there are people producing. And we have to remember that they really are people and should be treated like people, for better or for worse. So I bid you good night. I promise a Spearfish video next week, a Hero 616 video coming up this Thursday. We'll see you later.